Uh, now to the affirmation, uh, aforementioned weirdness. Uh, Rondo out of the rotation, third on the depth chart behind Michael Carter Williams and Jerry and Grant. First of all, is, is it an on the court situation with Rondo and Hoiberg where he doesn't feel he can produce, or is this an off the court situation? Right, you always have to ask, and obviously Rondo had the uh, one game suspension um, last month for an incident with associate head coach Jim Boylan in Dallas. Um, but this is strictly a basketball decision. Um, he doesn't, Fred doesn't think that Rajon is playing at the right pace, either offensively or defensively. Uh, Rajon does not agree with that assessment on the offensive end. On the defensive end, he, he agrees that his pickup point could be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and he could be, you know, up a little bit more full court. But look, to me, this this really, I, it, it, it's just a bad fit. I mean, and this has been well documented since the signing. But if you look at Rajon Rondo's strengths, they're playing with pace, playing with athletes, and playing with shooters. And if you look at the Bulls' starting lineup, uh, you've got Jimmy Butler as an athlete. But even Jimmy is not a guy who likes to always play with a lot of pace. He prefers to play screen roll, a little bit isolation. Um, and, and Rajon's strengths to me are negated by this roster. He's not playing with uh, McDermott and Miritich off the bench. So it's, it's, I think it's going to be temporary, but it's certainly a big development w within the Bulls' world. Whether it's by way of trade or buying out the contract and then why, by way of free agency, do you get the sense that there's another team in the NBA that would like to have the services of Rajon Rondo? I mean, I can't answer that. I, I can't speak for the rest of the league. I can just say here in Chicago, I, I, I could be wrong here, but I really think that he'll be back in the rotation within a week or so. I know there's a lot of people speculating he's played his last game as a bull. Um, well, I, I just, I don't know. In, in that I, case, I do, you, that, do you think it's Hoiberg? Do you, do you think Hoiberg is, is, is not on board with that? And there might be a situation where he doesn't feel like him in the lineup fits what they're trying to do. And, and there may be more rumors about Hoiberg's future, as we talked about over the weekend. Well, I mean, Fred, this this is Fred's decision. I mean, he's owned it. He's said that at every juncture. And he's basically said that he doesn't think Rajon's playing with enough pace the way he wants to play. And Michael Carter-Williams gives him a, a better look. But, you know, in the backup right now is Jaron Grant. And, uh, you know, I, I know the Bulls are also trying to look at young players. But to me, Rajon Rondo with that second unit makes more sense than Jaron Grant. Whether the Bulls come to that conclusion, I don't know. But, um I, 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 do, I just think it's, uh, you know, Fred did this with Nikola Mirotic uh, a couple weeks ago, and I know Nikola doesn't have the pedigree that Rajon Rondo does, but, you know, he benched him outright for two games, came back, and he's a prominent member of the rotation again. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out, but uh, certainly a big development currently. All right, keep it in weird for us in Chicago. Casey Johnson from the Chicago Tribune. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Jared. All right, we'll see the, uh, the Bulls tonight. Doug McDermott gets the start for um, Dwayne Wade, but... Rondo, did anything Casey Johnson just say, is that different than what we talked about entering the preseason with these Bulls, how they would mesh together and how it could work? No, not at all. And uh, the point for me is um, you have Rondo, you have Horiberg, where they're getting along and not say cool and whether it's a fit. You know, on the court as we see as of right now, I, I have to go to manage it. And Paxman and Gar Foreman, what did you see in Rondo, his game, that will make the Chicago Bulls better? He's a talented point guard, but KC said it. His strengths are pace, shooters, athletes, getting out, running, playing fast. And he's effective playing that way. And obviously he's had his turmoil with a lot of coaches. So I would wonder if we could get a chance to talk to Paxson and Gar Foreman. What were they thinking about having this fit in Chicago? He is a guy that's still effective. You saw what he did in Sacramento. You got to take Rondo the entire package. You know what the package is, package is with Rondo. So I don't understand if the package off the court and on the court don't fit, Sekou, what was the mindset uh, of the management? Well, the, the part about it that really doesn't make sense is if, if it's simply Fred Hoiberg saying that Rajon Rondo is not playing with the pace he wants. This is a veteran point guard, a guy who's won a championship. You tell him, I need you to pick up the pace, he picks up the pace and you move on. So it's got to be more to it than he's not playing the way I want him to on this end. And if this is a, a situation where you feel like Michael Carter-Williams gives you a better chance to win every night than Rajon Rondo, then say so. Make that clear and, and let Rajon Rondo understand where he fits in the rotation and in the pecking order. If that's not the case and there's something else going on, it needs to be fleshed out. I, I, I have a hard time understanding how you could get to this point of this you know, relationship between Rajon Rondo and the Bulls and you're just now figuring out 
he's not a good fit. That doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. anybody, uh, certainly not the fans, certainly not to us from afar, and I'm sure to Rajon Rondo if that's what he's being told by the Bulls. Well, say, Corey, I think Smitty brings up a great point. W what should the fans think the organization's expectations are at this point? With management putting together the roster the way they did, is this a team that's going to be okay being the eighth seed or missing the playoffs with the guys they brought in? I, I don't think they're going to be okay with it, obviously. But I think, Jared, if you think back to free agency and how the summer was going, everything that the Bulls did changed course at one point. You know, we didn't know who was staying, who was going. You get D-Wade, you add Rondo, you, you suddenly take a team that was, you know, planning to kind of strip things down and build around Jimmy Butler to, well, we got these two veteran players, guys who have won titles. So let's keep it together and see if we can piece together a team that can contend and, and put us in a position to, you know, to make the playoffs this year. The idea uh, sounds great in theory, but the fact that they're not playing at the level they wanted to or management wants them to or assume they would, I think, it almost feels like, well, somebody's got to be the scapegoat for this. Somebody has to be the reason we're not you know, competing at the level we want to. And, and it looks to me like Rajon Rondo is that somebody. And I look at it as Seiko hit a big point is um, if you want to play with pace, you go and talk to him and you adjust your lineups. But I, I'm with Seiko. Everything has to be wins and losses. Right. We're not winning the way you're playing, Rondo. We think Michael Carter gives us a better chance. And that's for everybody that's on the organization. But I really don't see anybody else on that, ro on that roster that's much better than Rondo to do what he does. When right. you start, I love Michael Carter Williams. I love his length and everything. But He's not a shooter as well, and he's not the passing facilitator, and he doesn't have the pedigree of a Rondo. So tweak the lineup, ask him that we want to start you, move you down, and come off the bench, and maybe that second unit get them going, and put the onus on him whether he wants to accept that or not.